Hello guys, this is on vaccine anxiety or vaccine hesitancy. So if you're anything like me and you don't particularly trust the corporate media, you have turned to alternative sense-making people slash institutions. And two of the most prominent of these are Sam Harris, the sort of Buddhist neuroscientist atheist, and Brett Weinstein, kind of chilled out evolutionary biologist atheist. And Brett Weinstein basically made a video saying, if you take the vaccine, you'll probably die. And Sam Harris then made a video in response saying, if you don't take the vaccine, you'll probably die. And I was left in a kind of decision wilderness with a lot of people I know coming very heavily on one side. Um, people saying, are you insane for not getting the vaccine? And people saying, are you insane for getting the vaccine? This can lead you, leave you pulled in two directions, uh, a bit torn, as it were. And, and that kind of tension of, of values and priorities and what you need to do can cause a lot of inner chaos. And there's a lot of that going on, a lot of falling out, a lot of uh, tears in relationships, a lot of disruptions in families and friendship groups and even countries and, uh, and cultures. I'm not here to tell you whether to get the vaccine or not. I'm sure you've made up your mind or, or you've, or if you do make change your mind, it, this might be a tiny seed of it. But um, I'm, like I said, I'm not coming down on either side in this video. It really is down to you now because a lot of the mainstream sense-making apparatus, the newspapers, the news media, which used to speak truth to power, um, you know, stuff like Watergate, Whereas now it covers the arse of power and they come down very black and white, left, right. And it's hard to find a middle ground. It's hard to trust any of them. And it's hard to trust the WHO. It's hard to trust Dr. Anthony Fauci. It's hard to trust Dr. Neil Ferguson. It's hard to trust Boris Johnson because they break promises all the time and they move goalposts and they get caught lying and they never address the fact they've got caught lying. Um, Again, guys, you're not alone if you feel in the wilderness here. You're not alone if you don't trust these people. Um, and you, at the same time, you have a lot of social pressure or employment pressure to get the vaccine. I heard yesterday that thousands of people have left the care home industry, which is very sad, but they've been forced to get a vaccine. Um, so they've left that for the NHS, where you're not forced to get a vaccine, apparently. Um, again, I'm not... I can see the arguments for and against that. I'm just saying all the turmoil this is creating. So I'll maybe try and write down five reasons for, five reasons against, you know, if you're still undecided or if you're undecided about the third one um, or the fourth one that'll be your, you know, if you're weighing up the pros and cons, the best thing to do is to, is to write something down. I have a decision that took a bit, that, we're gonna, that we're taking six months and then I just had to write down a list of pros and cons. It'd be 10 pros and nine cons. Take two minutes and there I go with the, the one that's got 10, 10 pros, you know? Um, yes, as I started with, we've got Brett Weinstein who's got Dr. Robert Malone, who claims to be the inventor of mRNA technology and a video with millions and millions of views, which is still on YouTube, shockingly, some of it, um, saying <laughs> the vaccines are incredibly dangerous. And then you have Sam Harris coming out saying it's, it's silly to think the vaccines are dangerous and that it's, uh, everyone should do it, it's, it's incumbent on them and he can't wait to get his kids vaccinated and stuff. I can only speak for what the atmosphere is like in the UK, even though those two aforementioned intellectual figures are American. In the UK, the government have not got a good way of communicating with us. Um, Pants Party Matt Hancock, who is now gone, thankfully, said once everyone is over 50, once everyone over 50 is vaccinated, we can cry freedom, which is just so cringeworthy to even say. And then we got to that and it was actually all the vulnerable people. Then it was actually over 40s, over 30s, over 20s. Um, now it's 12 year olds, 15 year olds they're talking about. A lot of this can bring anxiety as well because you never know if they're going to shut everything down again. You never know what crazy vaccine passports they will say they're not going to introduce and then the next day, without blushing, introduce. 
you don't know where you stand with them. It's a bit like an abusive teacher or parent relationship. They keep, they move the goalposts. You don't, you're mixing up pain and pleasure. You don't know what you're being rewarded for or punished for. You know they're a few steps ahead in the game. You know they've planned all this. Uh, <laughs> put the propaganda posters aimed at young people, etc. All that adds to the anxiety as well. My tip for that is try, try not to see it as, as personal, pervasive or permanent. It's not personal, it's not pervasive, it's not permanent. <laughs> I was going to say hopefully, but it can't be that. You know, in a hundred years it will be different, even if it's worse, it will be different than that. But I'm sure it'll be better. I'm sure governments will give up all this uh, newfound power. Also guys, don't sweat over the small stuff and remember it's all small stuff. Even the huge, horrible, dystopian, they're going to vaccinate your kids when they don't need it maybe thing. It's all small stuff in the grand scheme of things. Just look at the Hubble telescope and think Boris Johnson and Biden are just specks of dust in the cosmic dance. And if that doesn't relieve your anxiety, I'm afraid I don't know what will. All right, guys, take it easy. Check out the channel, subscribe. Bye-bye.